The listing agreement, that is the topic for today. I'm gonna to show you guys how to fill out the listing agreements, um, which pretty simple contract. It's about four pages. This is the contract that everyone uses in order to um, get those brand new listings. So this is something you guys are gonna to wanna to know about, um, especially if you're trying to get listings this year. Oh, nice. We got door knocking and cold calling. That is sick. Good luck out there. Make sure you bring some good materials and a big smile on your face and some water. <laughs> and yes, I love that. Partner up with people. Always partner up with agents. If you don't want to go alone, do it together. Get a group of agents in your office. Go out and door knock. Get your face, your names out there. Go to networking events. Go door knocking, send out mailers, post some interviews on your social media. Get out there, team up, find other realtors who are motivated too. Great idea, guys. Show properties and get at least one contract signed, whether purchase or rental. That's awesome. That's a great goal. Um, and I hope that you make that happen. Make sure you find the right properties and, uh, and sell, 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 right? So cool, sounds like you guys got a lot of good goals for the weekend. So welcome uh, everybody to this training today. I'm Jennifer, I am the branch manager for the downtown Orlando office here in Orlando, Florida. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a quick training today on the listing agreement. Um, so I'm pretty sure everybody already knows but the listing agreement is the main contract that you will use in order to establish those brand new listings that you get. That is the first contract that needs to be signed when you are dealing with a seller of property, whether it be residential or commercial, you're always going to need your client, AKA the seller, to sign the listing agreement, which basically authorizes you and Lifestyle Realty, um, the authority to market, and sell that property. So that is officially um, what they are legally agreeing to in the listing agreement contract. So everybody should have a, an account with Transaction Desk already. Um, this is provided to you through the company. If you do not have your details, you will have to email Carolina with a K um, or Rachel to get your login details and they can get that set up for you if you're a brand new agent. Um, if not, then there's no excuse. You should already have all of this set up and um, you should be here on your main agent dashboard through Transaction Desk. This is the main system that we use in order to find our contracts and submit for closings. So I'm going to go into an account I have for training already and let's just go ahead and get started. So you will come in here um, if you haven't done so already, you'll have to create a brand new transaction. I suggest to use the uh, property address as the main um, name. That way you can keep track of all of your transactions easier that way, okay? So um, obviously this one is just for training purposes, but if this were a regular transaction, the property address would be here and it should say open over here. You would not change anything until closing. You leave it open and then you come to closed here when you have all of the things on the checklist uploaded. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna click here on the right-hand side. There is this drop down menu and you're going to click on forms here. Now under Forms is where you're going to find all of the paperwork that you need in order to um, send your paperwork out to your clients. So for the listing agreement, it's going to be the very first one here where it says agency disclosures, listings, commission, and registration forms. Okay. So you're going to scroll down and you're going to come here where it says exclusive right of sale listing agreement dash transaction broker. Um, if you remember from the test, there are different uh, agency relationships you can have. So make sure that you are choosing the one that says transaction broker here in the um, contracts because you do also have a non-rep and a single agent. I'm not gonna go into the details of those relationships. You should remember that from the test. So just make sure you choose the transaction broker Okay, and then you're going to click add here. 
You're also going to want to add a seller's property disclosure. Um, if you haven't listed property before, uh, by Florida law, every uh, seller who has lived in the property will have to disclose the current conditions of the property and everything they know about it. Um, it's a yes, no, or don't know type of questionnaire that we give the sellers to fill out and disclose everything they know about the real property. So um, always make sure you get that done. Sometimes I'll print it out and bring it with me to the listing presentation and have them fill it out right there. Um, other times I will send the AuthentiSign template right here, which pretty much adds the bubbles in there for them so they can just do it through transaction desk. So um, I do it both ways. It just depends what's easier for you and the client. Um, but I definitely like to do it through transaction desk most of the time because it's a lot more simple um, and it already plugs it all in so that they can just do yes, no, or don't know. Um, so you're always going to have to include that when you're working with a seller, um, unless the only exception is if they have not lived in the property. Otherwise, you do have to bring a seller's disclosure or have them fill one out. And then you'll want to upload that into the MLS listing once you have everything ready. Okay. So we're going to do that. Also, another um, another big one you might want to remember is the lead-based paint disclosure. If you're dealing with an older property before 1979 or 8, I think it is, um, you will have to have the seller sign a lead-based paint disclosure um, and have that uploaded to the MLS so that the buyer's agents can just download that and have the buyer sign off on it and you have your full disclosure right there. Okay, um, so when you are dealing with older properties, you want to release yourself from liability and just have the uh, buyer and seller sign one of those. Okay, so we're just going to use those two forms for now, which is the listing agreement and the seller's property disclosure. So here I'm going to open the listing agreement. All right, so this is the exclusive right of sale listing agreement, okay? So basically, like I said earlier, this is just an agreement between uh, lifestyle and the client. Basically, the client is authorizing you and the brokerage to market and sell the specific property, okay? So um, let's see here, I will do, let's see, I just sold the house yesterday, so I guess I'll just use that information as if I'm listing it. Um, all right, so seller. So say for example, um, I am the list agent. She agreed she wants to sell the house. Um, and her name is, hold on, Samantha Galloway. Okay, so Samantha Galloway owns a single family home here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we discussed over the phone that she's thinking of selling. We talked about the numbers. She wants to move forward. So I'm sending her the contract, all right? But first I got to fill out the contract before I send it to her. So I'm going to fill out her name here. You always want to use the full legal name of the seller. So make sure you always verify who you're talking to by looking into the property records, which most of the time is going to be through the county. So here in Orlando, you can look at the um, Orlando property, the, um, I'm not, sorry, the Orange County property appraiser. There we go, that's the right name. Um, so it just depends on what county you're in, or I'm, I'm sorry, the county that the property is in is where you're going to want to look up this information. Um, just look up the property address to verify that you are dealing with the actual owner of the property and to make sure there's no other owners of the property as well. Because if there's somebody else who's an owner, you're going to have to get their signature on this form as well. So, for example, if you look at county records, you've been talking or I've been talking to Samantha, but she has... Um, you know, her husband on there too, you know, Tom Galloway, then I'd have to add him on here as well and have him initial and sign everything as well. So just make sure you do your proper research and look up the county records for the property. That way you are aware because you can never just trust everything a client says to you, right? <laughs> so um, Samantha Galloway, she's my seller. And now on the second line, it's going to be for the broker. So you're going to put lifestyle international realty here. Okay, so I got my seller, I got my broker, all right. And then here is going to be authority to sell property in section one. This is going to be the time frame of your actual time on the market and how long they are agreeing 
to give you in order to sell the home. So um, typically um, in, in this market, we're doing about six months. Um, but if you are doing like a higher end listing that's above six, seven, eight hundred thousand, I would definitely do a little bit longer, maybe up to a year. Or if you're doing commercial, um, I would do maybe a little longer up to a year. But traditional single family usually is not too hard to sell. Um, so we usually do about six months. So um, the date today is the 19th of January. Six months from now is going to be June. So we're going to do uh, June 19th of 2023. So you click down here on the calendar, scroll over to June 2023, and we'll choose the 19th over here. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the end date. I put it in the wrong place. So this is where you put the expiration which is June 19th. Over here is where you put today's date or the date that you want to start uh, marketing the property on MLS. So say for example, they sign the contract today, but you're gonna put it on the MLS tomorrow. Then you can just change this to January 20th. So she agreed, but she says, let's wait for the weekend to put it on the market you can put it on uh, the MLS tomorrow. And you say, okay, perfect. That gives me time to get pictures done, to get the seller's property disclosure filled out, to start marketing it, and to get it up on the MLS, essentially. So we're going to put tomorrow's date on there as when this actual agreement begins, because that is when the property is going to be put up on the MLS, okay? So we have June, I mean, not June, what am I saying? January 20th, and it expires on June 19th of this year. So that's basically almost six months. Okay. We can even change this to the 20th to make it exactly um, six months. All right. And so we go down here, we're going to put the property address where it says street address in section two. So I'm going to put the address here, 208 Wilmer Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 32811. So it does separate things into little boxes, as you can see. So you will have to separate the address, number, street, and then city and zip down here. All right. So now over here, it's going to ask you for the legal description of the property. So you can find that either in the county records or in the MLS. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to look at the listing. And you're going to find the legal description right here under the section where it says land site and tax information on the MLS. So if you look down here, it says legal description on the top left corner. I'm going to copy here and then paste that into the legal description here. All right. So pretty simple, just copy and paste. And then we have personal property being included in the sale. So when you are talking to a seller, you want to make sure, especially when you're at the listing appointment, um, you want to make sure you ask them, um, what are you planning to take with you? And, and what is included with the sale? Um, for example, some things are like uh, the washer and dryer. Those are big. You know, um, are they taking them? Are they leaving them? Is there any furniture that's staying behind? Um, you know, stuff like that. So. You can look at the matrix or the MLS listing, and you can go under here where it says interior information on the listing. And if you look under appliances included, it should tell you everything that's included with the sale. So for this specific house is dishwasher, microwave, range, refrigerator, tankless water heater, right? So that's what they have on the MLS because this, um, this agent probably asked him, well, what are you leaving? What are you taking, right? So you want to make sure that you ask the seller um, when you go to that house, hey, is everything going to be included here with the sale? Or is there anything that you are taking with you? And if they say, no, we're not taking anything with us, everything is included, all right? So they have a washer dryer, so you're just going to add that here. Make sure you put washer dryer so that you know, hey, that's included with the sale and it's going to go to the buyers. So occupancy, um, you know, you'll know the situation, whether they're still living in the property, whether it's vacant because it was an investment and their tenants just moved out or 
you know, whatever the situation is, just make sure you click whether it is occupied or it's not occupied. So let's just say this one is occupied and we'll put it is owner occupied. So I always like to specify because sometimes you'll have tenants, sometimes you'll have the owner. So it just depends on the situation. So if it is owner occupied, I check the first box and I put owner occupied here. If it's a tenant, you do the same thing, but you put when the lease expires here. So price, um, this is definitely something that you should have discussed um, with the seller um, after running some comps. Uh, I use RPR through the MLS, which is a system that we use to look up comps and to adjust them and compare them to each other. Um, so you should have already done that before you know, signing this agreement with the seller to give them an idea of what they can get for their house. Okay, so I ran the comps with my client. Um, I told her, you know, you could probably get high, on the high end 270, 275 for the house, right? So she says, all right, I wanna start at 275. And I say, okay, cool, we'll start there, you know? And don't let these sellers intimidate you with a number that you think is too high because, you know, you can always negotiate with them and say, hey, if we don't get any activity, if we don't get any showings, any offers within the first three, four weeks, are you willing to reduce the price? You know, uh, a lot of sellers will will try to hardball you and be like, no, this is what we want. This is what we want to list it at. Um, and sometimes it's unrealistic, right? So um, you always want to try to find that middle ground and say, well, this is what the numbers are showing here. This is what the recent sales are showing and have the data with you so that you can kind of show them, hey, this is what's going on in the area. This is what houses are selling for. And make sure they understand renovated houses that are updated are gonna sell for more than a house that is the same square footage, but not updated. That's a big difference, especially when it comes to these appraisers, right? They're gonna look at that and they're gonna add value because of that. So make sure your sellers understand that as well. Cause there, some sellers are gonna think, oh, they have this house, and uh, another house up the street sold for, for this much, but that one was fully renovated and your clients is not. You have to kind of bring them back to reality and say, hey, I know this one sold at this price and you're looking at that number. However, that one is fully renovated um, and yours is not. You haven't done any upgrades to this house besides some, you know, some AC servicing, you know, and some lawn care. You need to do more than that if you want that type of price, you know, so a lot of the times being a listing agent, you might have to, um, you know, be a little bit more realistic with these sellers as well, um, you know, in order for the deal to go right, because you don't want to overvalue it either, and then have problems with the appraisal. So uh, make sure you're always advising your sellers um, correctly, according to the comps and the sales. So we're going to list it at 275. Um, make sure you discuss financing options with them um, and know the differences between the loans as well. Never try to give um, an interest rate or advice on loans to people. Always leave that to a mortgage lender. And remember that you're, you are not a mortgage lender. You are not a licensed lender. So don't ever try to give that information to anybody. Always call someone you know or say, hey, let me find out and I will get back to you. Let me talk to one of my top lenders. You know what I mean? So um, don't try to go in and explain a bunch of financing stuff um, and then make yourself look like an idiot when that's not the case. Um, so always leave that to the professionals, but do discuss the terms of financing with them. You know, the difference between cash and a loan, a government loan, a non-government loan, which, you know, everybody should know the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional. If you don't know the difference, get with the mortgage lender, schedule a meeting, a phone call, a coffee, a training, whatever you got to do, and learn the differences between this stuff. This is your job, guys. So you want to be able to explain this stuff to a client. Um, as best as you can. So if you don't know the difference between a conventional and an FHA, how are you going to explain it to a seller when they ask you, well, should I accept FHA? Should I accept conventional? Should I accept a VA loan on my house? Then what are you going to say? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, you want to know what these things are. So if you don't have a good lender, get with one of our, um, get with one of our partner companies like PRMG or call um, another realtor you work with who has lenders and set up a meeting. Um, and just start learning the differences between the main loans. That way you can advise clients properly. So with this one, it is renovated, nice home. So we're going to accept all financing on this one because we will have no problems getting financing. You might have issues getting financing if it is a property that's older 
um, that needs work, um, if it's a flip, an investment, um, you know, something that needs a lot of rehab, um, you might not be able to get it financed VA or FHA. They do have very strict guidelines through HUD, which means that property has to meet certain um, criteria in order for them to approve a loan on that property, um, you know, which is like no, no wood destroying organisms, no wood rot, um, closed doors and windows. Like there's, there's a lot of things. I'm not going to go into it, but just make sure you know the difference and what they'll finance and what they won't. Cause a lot of government loans want the house to meet certain standards of, um, of living. Okay. So we're going to accept all financing here, which is going to be cash conventional VA FHA seller financing. That's a big no, but, um, you know, that is the case in some situations, maybe they're so desperate. They just want somebody to take over the payments and just pay them directly. Uh, which is seller financing. So you can do that. Um, that's a little bit more of a complicated situation. You might want to do that through an attorney. Um, so I wouldn't get into that though, if I were you, unless it was absolutely um, necessary. Okay. So we're going to keep going. Da, 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 da. So we're here in section six. This is talking about where they authorize the house to actually be exposed. Um, so as you may know, the MLS shoots out the listings to third-party websites like Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, Trulia, HomeSnap. All those are third-party vendors that are directly connected to the MLS. So the homes will shoot out to those third-party sites and be promoted to people through those party sites as well. So um, if the seller for some reason doesn't want that, you can opt out right here. Um, that it says seller does not authorize broker to display on MLS. That's if you're doing something maybe off market. Um, so that will be there if the seller for some reason doesn't want to do that. And then in part E, it's going to ask you about a lockbox. Um, you can buy the electronic lockboxes from the association. Um, here in Orlando, you can go to the Orlando Regional Realtor Association over by um, College Park, and you can purchase the electronic boxes. I think they're about $130 now. Um, so you do have to have the Supra Key app on your phone, um, and then you can use those lock boxes on your listing. So I like to use the lock boxes because you can keep track of everybody who's coming in and out of that property because every realtor who opens that box, their information is going to automatically be sent to you through the app. So you will be able to see who's entering the property, how long they were in the property and when they left the property. So um, you want to know all of that stuff, especially if you're dealing with a vacant property, um, just, you know, for safety purposes. So I always use an electronic lockbox. So I would click here, which says use a lockbox system to show and access the property. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna discuss all of this with the seller, okay, and make sure, hey, how do you feel about showings? You know, are you okay with me putting a lockbox on the door? Um, the realtors will be able to access that box and show their clients the house, whether we're there or not. Um, and I'll be able to keep track of who's coming in and out of the house. So just explain to your clients um, how that works. And, um, and if there's another way they want to do it, for example, if they want to be the one to allow people in because they're living in the property and there's, um, they have to make an appointment 24 hours to 48 hours ahead of time, um, you could do it that way too. Some people like to use the old school, um, the combo locks where you have to put the number um, so a lot of people still use those too. You just got to be careful with who you give the, that code to and make sure you tell realtors not to give that code out to anybody who is not a licensed agent. Really, they shouldn't be giving the code out to anybody, um, essentially. So, you know, you're, you're taking a little bit more of a risk with those combo locks, just because, you know, somebody could give out that code to somebody who shouldn't have it. So, um, you know, just be aware of every situation that could arise in real estate. Um, but I would prefer the electronic boxes. Um, so that's what I use. Okay. okay. So let's move on. Um, there's a section as well. If you want to withhold all verbal offers, which means you won't even accept verbal offers. I do not do that though. Um, because you do a lot of times you have people who will call and give you verbal offers, um, before writing anything in a contract. So I, I don't check that off because I do, I do honor verbal offers. Okay. 
And this is if they don't want to do automated estimates, which is like on Zillow, Trulia, where they do those automated estimates. Um, but we're going to leave it as it is. Okay. And then you have seller obligations. So you can read into this all on your own time. Okay. Now, section eight, this is compensation. So this is very important that you guys make sure you fill out this section correctly because this is going to be the commission for yourself and also for the agent on the other side, um, which is going to be the buyer's agent, right? Unless you end up being the buyer's agent. But most of the time, there's another realtor who will be the buyer's agent. So number eight says, seller will compensate broker as specified below for procuring a buyer who is ready, willing, and able to purchase the property or any interest in the property on the terms of this agreement or on any other terms acceptable to seller. Seller will pay broker as follows. So here in section A, it's going to ask you for percent, and then it says of the total purchase price plus a dollar amount. So this is the one I pick. Um, when I negotiate commissions, I remember that I'm not only negotiating my commission, I'm also negotiating the buyer's agent's commission. So if I screw myself, I'm also going to be screwing the other agent. So I don't try, I don't try and let sellers negotiate anything below 5%. I don't even consider anything below 5% because you have to remember that's being split between two realtors. Okay. We, we pay a lot of money to do this career. We learn a lot um, and we work a lot to get to where we're at. So don't let people lowball you when it comes to your commission or the other agent's commission. It's very important that you fight for that because you, you can't even fight for your own commission or the other realtor's commission. How are you gonna fight for your clients? How are you gonna fight for the best deal possible? Like that's the main thing you should be proving. Like, hey, I, I can fight for myself and I'm also gonna fight for you. Do you want an agent who just does whatever everybody says? Or do you want an agent who's going to lay it down for you, give you the facts and stand their ground and tell you, hey, this is this is what it is. You know what I mean? So don't don't let people lowball you, even if you are desperate for business, because remember, you're fighting for somebody else's commission here, too. So um, let's just say I got them to agree to, you know, um, 5 percent, you know, which if you split it into two will be two and a half per agent. Right. So let's just say um, the seller will pay broker as follows. So this is just my commission. So half of that would be two and a half percent. I also charge all of my clients, whether it's buyer or seller, the transaction fee, which our transaction fee here at Lifestyle is $395. So I'm going to put $395 here. So basically, I just put in this contract that the seller is going to pay me two and a half percent of the total purchase price. And he's also going to pay a $395 fee on top of this two and a half. So that means he's paying my commission, but also on top of my commission, he's paying the transaction fee, okay? And um, I always suggest to charge a transaction fee to your clients, guys, because remember, we also have our splits with lifestyle, so you don't want to take that, uh, you don't want to eat that cost and then also have to share um, or give your split with the brokerage. So just always try and charge that um, to your clients, guys, okay? So yeah, so A pretty much outlines what I'm going to get paid, okay, because this is what they're going to compensate broker. And in section nine, all right, this is going to be cooperation with and compensation to other brokers. So now this is going to be what we're offering the buyer's agent, uh, which is the other realtor on the deal, okay? So it says the buyer's broker, even if compensated by seller or broker, may represent the interest of the buyer. Broker's office policies to cooperate with all brokers except when not in seller's best interest and to offer compensation in the amount of blank. Okay. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to put two and a half percent because we got a total of five. So this is their half, which is two and a half. And we're going to leave the money part blank, just two and a half. That's it. Okay. And it says two and a half of the purchase price to a single agent or the buyer. We're going to click the next box and put the same thing, 2.5% of the purchase price to a transaction broker for the buyer. And the next one, I'm going to do the same thing, two and a half percent of the purchase price to a broker who has no brokerage relationship with the buyer. 
So basically, this is covering all relationships that could possibly arise from the other side, whether is it a transaction broker, a single agent, or a non-affiliated one. Um, this basically is just covering all those different scenarios. But at the end of the day, it's basically just saying we're offering 2.5% to, um, to an agent on the other side, whether they're transaction, single agent, or non-affiliated, all right? So make sure you do all three of those boxes and put the percentage that you're offering there um, to the other side, okay? Does anybody have any questions so far about anything that I've gone through on this contract? If you do, just put it in the chat. Any questions at all? Okay, I'm going to keep going. All right. So we just did sections eight and nine. We, um, we structured out our commission and the commission for a buyer's agent. So we're going to keep going. So part 11, um, this is basically if they decide to cancel. All right. Conditional termination at seller's request. Broker may agree to conditionally terminate. Uh, broker agrees to conditionally terminate. Seller must with must sign a withdrawal agreement. To reimburse broker for all direct expenses incurred in marketing the property and pay a cancellation fee. So basically, um, some listing agents will charge a cancellation fee. All right. Um, this is basically a cancellation fee to build in the cost of you know pictures, um, online ads depending on, on what your marketing strategies are as a listing agent, right? So um, say, for example, you have a higher end listing at almost a mil um, and you spent maybe 500 bucks in some, in some videos and some pictures and some online ads. Um, but then after two or three months, it's just not working out between you and the client or whatever the case is, you guys just decide you're, you're going to cancel it. You didn't sell it, right? Um, that means basically now the listing agent is in the negative because they spent money on pictures, they spent money on marketing, they spent money on doing open houses, on buying signs, right? So some agents, when they know they're going to be spending a, a bit of money on, on marketing the property, will kind of build in a cancellation fee into the listing agreement. Um, I've done it before. Um, I don't do it every time, um, depending on the situation, but, um, but I do sometimes, and um, it just depends on what your costs for marketing are. You know, you could have a commercial property or a higher end property that could cost you five hundred to a thousand dollars for pictures, video, and marketing, right? right? Or you could have a cheaper property where you just took the pictures yourself, did a video, you know, did a few open houses, and it only cost you maybe a couple hundred bucks, right? Um, so it just depends um, what you're dealing with and the situation. But if you want, you can add in here a cancellation fee of uh, you can put, you know, $399, $499. Um, you know, if you cancel and you don't get a sale, whatever, just ask for those marketing costs back. OK, you don't want to be in the negative um, just because, you know, it didn't happen. So uh, definitely build that into the contract if you if you feel you need to. OK especially if you're going way out of your way for a house that's not even close by you and you're spending all this money, it might be a good idea to put one in there. All right. Uh, dispute resolution in part 12 is going to be if there's any type of litigation or disagreements, what exactly is going to happen. So that's usually going to go to arbitration. Um, so I just leave that blank um, because, I mean, really anything can happen in those type of situations. So that's about it. Um, then there's a section for additional terms here in section 14. So if you did want to add anything else that's not in the actual contract, you can go ahead and add that in here. Okay. And then you will just have to have the seller sign off on everything. And you will have to sign here where it says authorized sales associate or broker. This is where you are going to sign and date and then put um, Lifestyle International Realty here. Um, and you can put your specific branch if you want, but it's not really too important. Just make sure you have um, your broker, your signature and your date, and then the seller's signature and date here. So um, the, the phone and the address, email, um, it's not necessary unless you wanna put it in there, um, but it's not required. The main things is just make sure you sign and date, and make sure the seller signs and dates. So basically, you and them are agreeing to market and sell this home. 
So that's basically the main parts of the agreement. Give me one second, guys. I'm so sorry. Hello? Hi, Stephanie. I'm doing a Zoom class. Can I call you back when I'm done? All right, thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Sorry guys, that was one of the one of the realtors calling me. Okay, um, where was I at? Uh, okay, so yeah, so basically the most important thing um, is just to make sure that you have your signature and your date, and also that the seller signs and dates it. So that's basically it. As you can see, it's not really a long contract. It's four pages. So make sure you review this contract through Transaction Desk. That way, you can really um explain this to a client in the best way possible. Um, I have had a few clients get really confused about the uh, about the co-op, um, this part right here in section nine, because they, they think that I'm adding multiple commissions on here. So I've had to go in and explain to people, no, that's just the different types of relationships that that it's referring to when it comes to an agent. Um, and a lot of people don't get it. They're like, why are you putting it three times? I'm not going to pay that much. You know, so I've literally had to break this down for people so they can understand it in simple terms. So, you know, it can be a bit confusing to somebody who doesn't know, excuse me, who doesn't know contracts. So just make sure you understand this and you're able to explain to clients like, no, I'm not charging you, you know, triple the commission here. This is just breaking down all the different relationships that a realtor can have who's going to bring us a buyer. And then my commission is up here. So it's a total of 5% altogether. And that's it. Plus the 395. Okay. So just make sure you're able to explain that to people because they want to know what they're paying, you know, and they want to know how much that is. You might have to break down the numbers for them, get the list price, multiply by 5%, tell them what they're going to be paying, get a CD from the, the title company, um, a preliminary so they know what their fees are going to be through the title company. So, um, you know, make sure that you know what you're doing when you're working with sellers and to get all that information for them. So that way they understand um, what they're going to be paying um, when you guys are getting closer to, to selling the property. All right. right. So you, um, our in-house title is a uh, new world title. You can reach out to, I think she goes by magical mail um, in the WhatsApp and the, in the, and the lifestyle app. So you can reach out to her or, um, or one of the girls in admin, they can get you the contact info. Um, so if you do need a, like a preliminary um, for a seller to see what fees they charge for a closing, uh, just make sure you get all that information for them um, and bring it with you in like a nice folder with the contract, with the CMA report, with your business card, maybe a short bio about your yourself um and the process of selling if you want to do something like that your listing presentation um just make it nice and professional and presentable uh when i go to listing appointments what i usually like to do is i'll bring one of the lifestyle branded folders um and i will print out the property address and put it on it with my little um i forgot what you call those things it's, it's like a little it makes stickers um so i put the address on there i put my business card on the bottom where it holds the cards i put a cma my listing presentation, I put a buyer tip, or not a buyer tip sheet, I'm sorry, seller, a seller tip sheet, um, the CMA report, of course, and, um, and that's about it, really. So uh, I bring that with me, and a seller's disclosure, I'm sorry, that's right, a property seller's disclosure, print it out and put in the folder as well, and I bring all of that with me to the listing presentations. That way I can say, these are the contracts you're going to have to fill out. This is the numbers of, from what I was seeing in the area. This is my contact information. You know, this is my listing presentation. That way you have it all together in one nice, neat format, and you can go over it with them. Um, and if they have any questions about the paperwork, you can go over it with them right there. So that's why I always like to print a hard copy, and I just always let them have it. That way they can just look at the con contract themselves whenever they feel like it. And if they have questions, they can reach out to me. So that's typically um, how I like to do it when I go on uh, on listing presentations. So um, so yeah, I'm gonna pretty much wrap it up here. Let me check the chat. Da, 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 da. Let's see, where can I watch this video again? Um, okay, so most of the time they do record these trainings and they will upload it to the training videos on the app. 
And also we have a YouTube channel. If you guys haven't followed us on YouTube, uh, please follow Lifestyle International Realty on, you, on YouTube. And there's a lot of our recorded trainings on there as well. So it will most likely be on there or on the app or possibly both, just depending on, on when they're able to upload that. And somebody else said, where are the lifestyle folders that you use? I'm in the Aventura office. Okay, so I would ask Omi, if I were you, if you if they have um, those branded folders there. I know they sent a bunch to us from Miami. We have those black folders that just say lifestyle on them um, that I like to give my agents when they have appointments so that they can put all of their information in there. Um, so I would definitely ask Omi if he has any folders in that office. If not, then, um, then make sure to tell him you want some of those branded folders and we'll, we'll have the broker send some over there to that office if you guys need some. So, but definitely make it as professional as possible and use a, a branded folder when you're doing your presentations. Uh, Hassan said, will you be doing a listing presentation training? Um, well, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't thought about doing one, but that's actually a great idea, um, you know, to kind of do like a mock listing presentation for people. Um, I will talk to the administrators, see if we can set something up like that and do maybe like a company wide training for that. Um, that's actually a really great idea. Um, there might be some trainings already on listing presentations, I believe that we've done in the past. Um, I personally have not done one myself, but I will see if we can arrange to do something like that. Um, but if you want to check out YouTube or our training video library, um, there's definitely trainings on listing presentations. Um, I personally found my listing presentation on Etsy. Um, if you guys are familiar with Etsy, it's a website that you can hire people to make all kinds of handmade stuff or like digital art or uh, whatever. So um, I actually bought our listing presentation on Etsy. So it already had all of the information. I basically just had to customize it with my bio and my pictures and my contact information because everything else was already done. The info, the design um, was already all there for me. So, and it was fairly inexpensive. So if you guys want to check out Etsy, um, there's a lot of great options for real estate agents on there for logos, for presentations, for, you know, worksheets, like all kinds of stuff on there for realtors that people sell for fairly cheap too. So if you want to check out Etsy, I suggest check out the website or download the app on your phone. There are all kinds of cheap goodies for realtors on there. That's actually where I got a few of my logos from. And I also got my listing presentation from there as well. My buyer's presentation, I, I created that from scratch through Canva. Um, so I like to use Canva to create like flyers, presentations, um, stuff like that. And then um, if I don't have the time to do like a whole long presentation or slideshow, whatever, typically I'll order it through, through Etsy. So if you wanna check it out, definitely check Etsy out on your own time. If you don't have the time to create some big long presentation, then don't do it. Just buy it from somebody else and customize it to your liking. Literally, it doesn't have to be difficult, guys. Just find something you like, plug in your info, and make sure you bring it with you when you go to these meetings. It's going to make you look so much more professional as well. When you have a nice presentation and a branded folder with your business card, you've looked up the CMAs, and, and try to know some little goodies about the area too, if you can, because that will impress the sellers. Like, Oh, did you know there's a new school going up over here on this street? Or oh, did you know they're building uh did you know they're building a, a whole new shopping plaza over here? Or did you know they're extending the road over here? Or did you know there's gonna be some new homes over here in the corner, which will increase the property values in your neighborhood? It's little things like that, guys, that will make you stand out from the next agent who comes in and says the basic shit. Oh, hey, I work with these people. Um, I've been in business this many years. Here's the contract. You know, can I get the listing? You know, rather than somebody else who's coming in, who knows, oh, I know this about the area. I know that about the area. I live around the corner. I know this is going on. I know they're doing this. They're building this. The, the, the sellers are going to be like, wow, you know everything about the area. Like, you're the perfect person for the job. You know, so it's always little things like that that can help you stand out as well. 
So, you know, it's the little things, guys. And, um, and just make sure you do your research on the area or talk to another realtor or somebody else in the area if you don't know. You know what I mean? Um, and, and just go in there as knowledgeable as possible so you can get the listing, you know? Uh, somebody said, please go over the arbitration section again. Are initials required? Um, no. Okay. So you do not have to fill this arbitration part out. It is not a requirement essentially. Um, but if they do decide to initial in this part, that basically is consenting to arbitration, um, which basically is you are agreeing that disputes not resolved by mediation will be settled by neutral binding arbitration in the county in which the property is located in accordance with the rules of the American Arbitration Association. So basically, if you do fill out those blanks, you, you're basically consenting to arbitration if anything goes wrong. Um, I, I don't typically fill that out because sometimes, you know, uh, a mediation will be the, the simplest way to overcome any type of disputes between you and the seller, between the seller and the buyer, or between whoever, right? Um, you know, so I, I don't fill that part out and it's not required, you know, um, but you can discuss that with the seller. And if they do want to consent to arbitration, they can initial right here. Okay. And then um, you would initial right here and the broker right here. But typically, um, you don't even want to get into any type of litigation or, or assume anything like that. So I would just leave all of this blank if I were you, because there's many different ways to resolve a dispute. Um, so I would just leave that blank if I were you. OK. Um, all right. So any other questions, concerns? I'm just giving out some tips here for you guys, for people who have not listed a property or done a listing presentation. But again, I love that idea about the listing presentation. I definitely think we should do something like that coming up. So um, maybe that'll be a training I can do here at my office. And then I can get that on Zoom so that, you know, everybody can uh, can attend and watch that. I think that'll be a good idea because you definitely want to know what you're doing um, before you go into a listing presentation. Because keep in mind, you know, buyers may not be as knowledgeable about real estate and about property values. But when it comes to sellers, they've already bought sometimes more than once. Um, so they are more knowledgeable than your average first time home buyer. Um, so make sure you know what you're talking about. Know the area, know the values, know the home and, and be able to negotiate your commission. Um, and don't be afraid. You know, don't 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 be afraid to to stand up for yourself and your business. Let them know the money and time that you're going to be putting into it. Let them know your marketing strategies, you know, how, how you plan to do open houses, all that. That's what they want to hear. The main thing the sellers want to hear from you if you are going to a listing presentation is what are you going to do to sell that property? You know, are you just going to put it on the MLS? Because literally any realtor can do that, right? What are you going to do to sell it? Are you going to do open houses every weekend? Are you going to do some online ads? Do you have a network of realtors and, and clients that you can send it to? Um, are you really good with uh, the internet? You're going to post it in different places. You know, are you going to do mailers? Um, you know, talk about this stuff. Reassure them that you're going to do everything you possibly can to sell that property to the best of your ability. That's what they want to know. So when dealing, you know, with the seller, it's going to be completely opposite of dealing with the buyer. And they're usually much more savvy when it comes to real estate as well. So, you know, make sure you go in there prepared, knowing your info and, uh, and even do a few mock listing presentations with your manager, with another realtor, you know, um, I, I, that's helped a lot of my agents on their first listing presentations, they decided to come into the office. We did like a little mock listing presentation. I pretended to be the client, asked them a bunch of annoying questions, put them on the spot. And they and, I, and if they had trouble answering, I would just help them on what to say and how to respond. So that's always an option too. If you're feeling nervous about your first listing presentation or whatever it is, practice with somebody who knows what they're doing, you know, and I'll get those, get those initial nerves out. So that you can go in there and you can kill it and you can get the listing. <laughs> so somebody said, um, I hope it's on YouTube. I just came in. Oh, you came in right at the end. 
But, um, but, you know, I will ask them if they can, if they can uh, upload this training to the app or to YouTube. So um, hopefully we'll get this one up as soon as possible so you guys can watch the full thing, all right? And then um, I will be trying to schedule a training for that listing presentation because I think that's a great idea. Um, so we will, we'll put it in the events tab in the app. Everyone here should have the Lifestyle One app on their phone. If you look under the events tab on the Lifestyle One app, you can see all of the trainings and events that we have coming up. So just keep an eye on that and I will have uh, something arranged for a training that talks about how to do a listing presentation. And again, don't be afraid to go to your top producers, your branch managers at your office and say, hey, um, I haven't done a listing presentation. Would you mind sitting down with me and doing like a mock presentation or telling me how you do yours and get some tips and tricks from people around you as well. Um, you always wanna get a tips and tricks from uh, people who are successfully doing it, all right? So anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. I got to get back to work. Um, but thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope you guys got some good um, knowledge, tips, and tricks from this. Um, again, if you, if you don't have time to make a presentation, go on Etsy. You'll be surprised how amazing they are. All right, guys. So I'll see you later. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Take care. And, uh, and yeah, go and sell, sell, sell. <laughs> see ya.